What's going on guys? I got a good one for you today. I'm going to be showing you how to reassemble your drum brakes on your 88 to 98 Chevy or GMC truck or SUV with a 10 bolt rear axle. The way I'm going to show you today is the easiest, most pain free way you can assemble these. And I think you'll get something out of this. So let's do an overview of what I got. I've got my brand new brake shoes here. My self adjuster. This is the passenger side that I'm doing. The driver's side and the passenger side are going to be a different setup, have a different part number. All new brake hardware and springs. And when I disassembled this, I made a stupid mistake because I hadn't done these brakes in a long time. This right here is your parking brake lever. It's attached to the brake shoe with a pin. Well, I threw my old shoes out and this was still connected. So I had to go to the wrecking yard, take apart an axle, get one of these out, bring it home and clean it up. You don't need many tools for this job. This is actually more than I'm gonna need, but this is what I decided to bring out. I got a rag and some brake grease. I'm gonna get you guys set up and show you how I do this. So what I like to do first is just do a quick overview of my parts and make sure everything is correct. Since this is the driver's side, it's gonna be marked L for left. You can see that on there. There's an L on there. And we have an L right here. Now due to poor quality control, sometimes these things get misstamped and they get messed up. So what I'm gonna do is go through, assemble everything, just mock it up and make sure everything fits correctly. I'm not gonna assemble it completely. And the easiest way to do this with these self adjusters is just slide this in here. I'm gonna put that there and this here. This parking brake lever goes on the outside and it goes underneath this. That little pin right there is gonna drop through up here in the top. And that's going to hold that in place. Then my adjuster for my star wheel, you've got a little roll pin that sits right here. I'm going to put that there. And there's room on this bracket that this slides behind. And I'm just going to prop this up over here. This spring should sit like that. This spring goes in here like this. This one goes across the bottom. On these retainer springs right here, it's narrow and open. This is the bottom. This is the top. They go on the top hole of your brake shoes. And these right here, the retainers, this is what goes through the back side of your backing plate, through the springs, and then comes up through here and that's what holds your brakes together. The reason that that, round, that narrow part goes on the bottom is because these sit like that and go right here. Okay, everything seems like it's okay. And if I were to give you some advice, take a picture of it before you take it apart if you're unsure. You can find images online, but you never know if those ones were put together correctly. So just take a picture of yours Make sure everything matches up. Then if, if, if you have any questions when you reassemble, you can refer back to your own picture. This all looks good, so I'm going to start actually assembling it. The way I do these is I assemble most of this. That way, when I go to the axle, this is all connected. I can slide it over the axle shaft, put it up into the wheel cylinder, and all my assembly is done. I'm not trying to work around the axle shaft, the wheel cylinder, anything like that, this makes it a lot simpler. So I'm gonna show you what I do to get this all together now. Let's start the assembly. So a couple things I do here may be controversial to the mechanics in the comments. This is just the way I do it. I've never had an issue with my own brakes. I've never had somebody come back that I've done brakes for and complain about anything being wrong. This is the way I like to do it. If you have a different way, that's completely fine but I'm gonna show you the way that I do it. So the first thing I'm going to assemble 
is this parking brake lever. To assemble this, you have this little pin that holds it in place. You have this little tension washer. You can see it's bent. And then you got this E-clip that sits on the back side of it. I like to lube these up. I have this Permatex synthetic, or I'm sorry, ceramic brake parts lubricant. That's what I like to use. So I'm going to take some of this Barney goop. Put some on here and lube it up. Once I get that lubed up, I'm going to take whatever extra I have. And I'm going to put it on here. Don't need a ton. Just a little bit. This is going to sit on the outside. The spring is going to go just underneath this pin. And that's going to drop through. I'm going to wipe my hands so I don't get grease on the brake shoe. And I'm going to flip this over. You're going to need to put tension on this because it'll push. See it come out of there? I'm going to take my E-clip. I'm going to line it up and push on the other side. If you take a plier, you can hold it. And get your E-clip started. Now that's started, put your plier in it. And there we go. And that's completely seated in there. This moves the way it should. Again, I'm going to wipe my hands, make sure I don't got excess grease on things. Now, your self-adjuster. I like to put a little bit of grease on these, not a ton. These do have a coating on them, so they're not too prone to corrosion, but I have had these rust and lock up before. Don't need a lot. A little bit, and then I'm going to smear it around the threads. As the nut goes down, it's going to spread that out more. The star wheel right here, it's going to go on like this, and the reverse thread on the driver or on the passenger side. On the driver side, it's going to thread on like this. I don't feel any extra resistance on this from the grease. Everything's going on smooth. Okay. The next thing we got is this little lock right here. And you can see right there. That's going to slide into those cutouts. So I'm going to put this on. And I'm going to put this on. And that's how that's going to sit right there. This goes on here. That goes on like that. And everything looks good there. Now I'm going to take the back side of this. Just put it. Oops. Put a tiny bit of grease on it. Lube up this roll pin a little bit. I'm going to put this on. And this is going to slide behind that silver bracket right there. And I actually need to rotate this down. There we go.
and that's going to sit like that. This spring right here, the thicker part of the spring is going to go to this arm right here. The way I like to do this is put this in the bottom hole and actually hook it through here, put it on the roll pin, and then put that back there. Since I don't have springs holding this on, this is going to fight me. So I'm going to leave it kind of loose. This big black spring right here is going to go over here. This slides in here, and that's going to go back here. I'm going to take this off until I'm ready. Slide this over, it's going to fall down in there. I'm going to put that in there. And then now it's kind of a game of wedging everything in here. And that's going to sit like that. Now this bottom spring. Sometimes you have to bend these out a little bit because down here at the very bottom of your brake shoe you've got to cut out on each side. I'm going to put, try getting this in there now. And that is a very tight fit. So I'm going to bend it up a little and then it drops in. I'm going to take this one, bend, bend it out a little, and that drops right in. Okay. And that's pretty much how I want that right there. Now what I'm going to do is bring this outside, slip this over the axle shaft, and install it into the backing plate. On the back of the backing plate, I'm going to come in with this. The spring is going to have to be compressed, and then it's going to slide in on this, and then that's going to hold everything together. Alright guys, so I got this out of my workbench here. There's the tools I think I'm going to need. There's my attaching hardware right there. And this is the axle got a brand new wheel cylinder in it everything cleaned up these little flat pads right here and down there those are all contact points so I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on there and then I'm gonna do a little dab of grease on each end of my wheel cylinder Now I'm going to take my brake assembly, I'm going to work it around. So now that I got this kind of positioned on here, I'm ready for the retainer.
Okay. I'm going to put that retainer in that spring. Get it down in there. And not do that. And there's that. I'm going to get this lifted up. So now that I already put this spring on one side, I'm going to try grabbing this other end, wrapping it under there, and putting it in the other side. And there's that. Now the last thing I gotta do is put this emergency brake cable inside that arm. And there's that. Now that I've got everything in place, everything assembled, I'm going to take a little bit of brake cleaner on a rag, wipe down my shoes. I'm going to do that on both sides, get everything cleaned up. Here's how everything looks now. Normally how you would adjust these is to put the brake drum on it and then rotate it until you felt a little bit of resistance, a little bit of drag, and that would be good. And you do that by coming in from the back side and turning that star wheel with a brake spoon or a screwdriver. But since I just put brand new wheel cylinders on this, it's out of the vehicle and I've got my brake lines on it, it's not going to do me any good to adjust it because as soon as I put fluid to this, bleed it, it's going to spread them out, they might be too tight. So I'm just going to mock it up with the brake drums on it. Once I get it installed in the vehicle and the brakes bled, then I'm going to adjust everything. And that looks better to me. Quite a bit better than it was just a little while ago.
right, guys. Once again, thank you for watching. And if you got something out of that video, I hope you tune in again. Stay tuned for next week because I got a little bit more coming for you. Thank you again to everyone and have a good night.